seminar. <clears throat> so today we have got a program on aligners, aligners, sorry. <clears throat> And uh, we have got a dynamic uh, speaker with us, uh, Dr. Feroz, uh, who did his BDS from Dhanlan Sagar College of Dental Sciences, Bangalore, MDS from Al Badr Dental Gulbarga, currently a consultant orthodontist working in Bangalore. And then we have got uh, a panel member, uh, Dr. Rahim Khan, a senior orthodontist. Uh, uh, he did his uh, um, uh, he's a professor in Mithila Dental College and Hospital. He's also a uh, proprietor of Smile, Launch Dental Care, and senior consultant at Apollo, uh, Apollo Dental. Thank you, uh, friends, and welcome to all. And uh, Firoz, it's up to you. You can start off now. Yes. Sure. Thank you. Uh, I'll start my screen sharing, sir. Yes, Dr. Feroz, you can uh, continue. Uh, Dr. Khan, can you, uh, can you switch, on, switch off your video, Dr. Khan? Yes, Dr. Feroz. Yeah. I'm audible, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Waalaikum assalam. I'm clear? I'm audible. You can carry on. You can, you can share your yeah. screen. Please. Yeah, bismillah. So, yeah, I'm sharing the screen. So, Alhamdulillah, uh, uh, I thank uh, Dr. Asim Basha, sir, so for that pleasant uh, intro uh, and uh, being so kind since the start of this uh, uh, inception of this uh, webinar. So, uh, I'm very thankful for all the GDP uh, dignitaries. Uh, uh, the doctors there to give me an opportunity in this wonderful platform to be able to present with whatever this topic uh, you know in the orthotics uh, and also like to thank, thank uh, dr nadeem sir and uh, dr rosia he's a panelist for today's panelist for uh, supporting me for presentation and uh, uh, being there for me so bismillah without I'll just start with the topic with okay, okay, today, okay. Uh, that is uh, clear I alignments push. in orthodontics. Let's start with the topic now. Basically, uh, we all know uh, what clear aligners are. As dentists, as well as uh, orthodontist, we have the uh, proper knowledge, uh, at least a uh, gist of what clear aligners are, what basically these uh, aligners are, or what they are uh, uh, used for. So we all know it's basically an uh, orthodontic appliance, which is used, uh, it's, a, it's a, one of the most uh, cutting edge uh, appliance, which is used to uh, treat, you know, they, uh, do the orthodontic treatment of the individuals. So uh, we have this idea. So we'll just get into the details of this topic. So starting with the overview, so first we'll see what are the clear aligners. So basically what exactly the clear aligners, the definition are, then we'll see how these clear aligners actually work. How, what is the mechanism, how the how these clear aligners are uh, uh, catching this market, or what is the mechanism of these markets and uh, clear aligners. Then we'll uh, look, look for the common problems which uh, occur, which a general clinician or an orthodontist faces uh, during the treatment and after the treatment as well. Then we'll have some, uh, uh, advantages which also will be uh, will be seeing today so to start with the definition by definition what are clear aligners so clear aligners are basically customized uh, appliances or trays which are used to move the teeth into a desired position so basically these are just a plastic tray which is uh, molded in the form of the teeth and then this tray is basically used to move your teeth in a, into a designated position with the with the help of uh, pressure, basically pressure. It's a pushed up of a force, which is used with this plastic trays, simple plastic trays to have a, a wonderful transformation uh, of the tooth corrections. So uh, getting into the technology. So if you ask any one of us, we, we would say that clear aligners are one of the most latest, what we, it's come to the market. It's one of the most uh, earliest things which, which we, we saw. So looking behind the technology behind this 
cutting edge technology behind this invisalign so the idea actually it was the old it was one of the most uh, oldest ideas uh, which was uh, got into the field of orthodontics before they came into practice so we'll just see for a little bit of history there so dr kessling in 1945 basically he used a uh, thermo formed uh, plastic trays for moving the teeth or maybe just cutting a small minor uh, tooth components and getting them into a uh, shape good shape so you can see in this photograph this is clear anal tray which is uh, which is given by uh, dr kessling to have small tooth movements Uh, to which small tooth movements were possible, and uh, then uh, we we all know that Invisalign is one of the most uh, common and most famous uh, term which we hear in our daily to day practice. So this Invisalign, Invisalign. So how did it start? It symbolizes one of the one of the market leaders in the uh, clear clear aligners market. So in nineteen in about in about nineteen ninety seven in April, uh, Mr. Kes Kelsey Swift and Zia Chisti. These are two MBA graduates, students from the Stanford University. these people actually they uh, they got it they got their orthodontic treatment done after that uh, they were given normal clear aligners what a basic orthodontist gives them to wear so what they noticed is that uh, when they whenever they didn't wear the retainers whenever the retainer was not worn by them they they would they would feel the teeth move a little bit slightly and whenever they put back those retainers back they felt that the tooth movements were a slight tooth movements were happening and there was a little bit of tightness they felt the tightness and then they felt that they, this uh, why not use uh, how come this uh, small plastic uh, tray has such a potential so we feel that teeth are in uh, particular so later on they went ahead and they they did a little of little bit of they were actually mba graduates so along with the latest computer technology and along with some orthodontists they formed this align technology uh, which was founded and later on it led to the inception of uh, the invisalign company yeah that was about the uh, basic uh, idea of how it started so let's see the classification of aligners now so we have some basic classification that is uh, given by proper so is aligners with no attachments we have simple trays here which uh, which are just molded in the form of the teeth and they don't have any attachments i'll come to the point attachments what exactly these attachments are next thing are aligners with attachments then we have third type of align aligners that is aligners with attachments attachments and some added auxiliaries some added uh, uh, things to it so in this picture you can see it's clearly visible uh, this is a first category where the, there's no attachments in this and this arrow point outs at uh, this 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 slight tiny bump you can see in this aligner this actually is, it's a piece of composite over there so that piece of composite it stick over the teeth so that that's basically known as attachment i'll get to the details of attachments why they are given where they are given and how they are given so so this is one category and another another category is the last category is uh, aligners with some additional auxiliaries like you can see in this picture there's uh, there's there's a, there's a there's a button over molar there's a button on the canine which is and there's a an elastic running so this some additional movements for some additional uh, to have the consolidated amount of movement to have some major movements to happen in the teeth so some additional auxiliaries like this buttons hooks are used so that was about the category uh, uh, classification of aligners now come to the indications so before i start with the aligners so what we, we should have a clear idea so where are these clear aligners are useful for us so there is a particular criteria for this aligners where they work so we'll just see a little bit of uh, things where uh, what in what cases we can use them first thing is mild to moderate space closure cases where in this picture you can see this little cross generalized spacing so these kind of cases are most uh, uh, promoted for using using this kind of uh, aligners next we have tooth movements following ipr so ipr is basically intraproximal reduction where you do some little bit of grinding of the proximal distal and mesial uh, surfaces of the teeth so so that there there will be a little resolution of crowding or to assist in proper tooth movement so that is basically ipr so where there is a little bit of ipr needs to be in such cases and in cases where there, there is a need of dental expansion so you can see there will be some maxillary arches which are collapsed uh, there is a bit of expansion is desired in such cases it is uh, given and in cases of distalization where we need some molar distalization to to to, do, to move the molars backwards in such cases and also relapsed cases are very much appreciated to uh, be treated with this uh, aligners so next uh, we there are other some other uh, cases as well where 
there is an extraction of a lower incisor. You can see in this picture, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a minor extraction of a lower incisor and space closer can be easily done with, in, with the aligners. Next, we have something, the category called as mild to moderate crowding. So in this, uh, in this picture, you can make out there's a arches, uh, there's a little bit of crowding in the anterior segment here. So in such cases, in mild to moderate cases, we can use aligners very well in some deep bite cases. So deep bite cases like this case and the open bite cases, mild open bite cases not very severe, the severity should be in the mild to, mild to moderate range. It should, should not be extreme uh, range for the aligners. So after that, the extreme range is, if it is crossed, the aligners won't work. So in some premolar extraction cases as well, aligners can be very well given. So those were a few indications. Uh, then now we'll come to some contraindications. So where the aligners are not uh, given, which are uh, not desirable to give. So some cases where there's a severe amount of crowding, as you can see in this picture, you can make out there's a lot of crowding in this case. So in such cases, there's, it's very difficult to resolve the crowding and have the teeth corrected. In such cases, it's not advisable to give. Then you have some cases like skeletal, uh, you have some discrepancies, skeletal discrepancies, where the maxilla, mandible, the jaws are involved. In such cases, it's very difficult to treat with aligners. It's only possible with surgery. So such cases, it's not indicated. Then we have some cases where centric COCR relation uh, discrepancies are there such cases are not uh, appreciated or those cases are contraindicated next we have some uh, severe rotated teeth very mutilated dentition such cases are not uh, uh, appreciated and you can see in this this last photograph there's an open bite severe open bite these kind of cases are not appreciated for the clear analysis and then same thing like and one more important uh, category here is short clinical crowns as you can see in this photograph some some patients have very small cl small clinical crowns in the teeth such cases are not advisable for aligners because there won't be a sufficient retention for the teeth to uh, hold the aligners so such cases it's not indicated and then we have some uh, some cases where there's a severe mutilation or periodontally compromised uh, dentition or such cases it's not suggested yeah that was about the indications and contraindications now we'll move ahead to the mechanism, how these aligners work. What are these aligners, uh, the mechanism, how to work and how do, how do the malocclusion get correct, corrected? So the treatment process, basically it's a process, which it's a stepwise process, which takes place. Then there's a lot of planning which happens behind the patient. Uh, usually you see in the conventional orthodontic basis, you see there's, 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 there's clips, which, and the doctor does the most of the work in front of the patient, with the patient. But in case of aligners, there's uh, behind the scenes, you do a lot of work. There's a lot of uh, digital planning which is done, and then you give the patient the treatment. That treatment is delivered. So first step is uh, it's basically in any case you start with the patient records. So records are most important. Records such as uh, we we take optical scans of the dentition or the PVS, olive and silicon impressions or bite registrations, and then radi comes radiographs, OPC, lateral step. These radiographs are must in orthodontic cases. And some photographs, of course, photographs. So we need some extra oral and intraoral photograph of the malocclusion, which will be very helpful for us to start with the process. So first thing is collection of the records. Then we'll follow it up with evaluation of records. And then we'll have some uh, staging and planning. There will be a lot of uh, there will be a lot of digital work which will be happen, which will be happening here uh, so that the treatment, treatment is planned in such a way and the virtual setup will be formed. So those are the next, uh, next steps. Third one is there will be a printing of these aligners. Once you have a digital setup planned, then the engineer, engineers and the orthodontist, they plan the uh, malocclusion, how the treatment should be proceeding. Then they have next step, which is fabrication process, which takes place. There will be a 3D printing. The latest cutting edge technologies is you have some 3D printer machines or CAD CAM technology, which is used most commonly in this manufacture of these aligners. So that goes. Then last step is finishing with the aligners and delivering the aligners to the to the patients so uh, to just just to have an idea what the clear aligners uh, 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 as optical scan looks like how to collect it for the clear aligners to uh, start with this is a small video i'll just play the video you get the idea of it so here the, you can see the person is scanning up he's using a scanner optical scanner there and moving around the arch So he's recorded the upper uh, lower arch there. Stepwise, upper arch, lower arch, then we have occlusal scanning. So 
So here the maxillary teeth, the palate, all these areas are recorded. Then it will be evaluated so that all the soft tissues and the hard tissues till the teeth we want are recorded properly. Then here they are recording the occlusion here. What kind of an occlusion it is. So yeah. A recording you will have a digital setup like this on your screens on the softwares so this digital setup will have all the data of the occlusion of the malocclusion uh, which you need to plan digitally so next step is basically after this thing you go ahead on through this and there will be some design which will go i'll just give you a simple idea with this Software, so clean check software, this is used by the orthodontist or the doctors, wherein the technicians, which they will be working behind uh, in the lab. So they basically start from the occlusion from the start. Suppose there's a class two case, the class three case, class, class three malocclusion. So they'll work out on the plan, how the uh, sequence should be, how the stages has to, uh, has to go ahead. So first stage, second stage, third stage. So then the treatment plan will be planned in, in the staging sequence. So I'll just play this video. Have a wherein you'll have all the 3D views and you'll have some something called as planning attachments over the teeth. So in this area, you you plan for attachments which has to be placed, which I'll be talking about next. Which these attachments are basically infused into this this aligners to assist in the treatment basically. So those attachments are planned out. And we plan for each and every teeth how this teeth has to move. What is the course of course of this teeth to move ahead from that position to this position? So that all this planning, all those data, the tips, torque, all those technical issues will be dealt ahead with the technician in the behind the scenes. And he'll work on the plan which the orthodontist has given. So there, here they're planning the. You can see this is a pre and post test showing it. As a pre, this is a post. That's how the planning and the digital workflow goes ahead. There will be a lot of steps in that. There will be something called as staging. There will be something called as refining. And all those things will be uh, dealt ahead with the engineers and the orthodontists. And then this, these people, they coordinate with each other. Whether the orthodontist is, they, the, they'll, be, they'll have a software communication. They'll have a comment session in that. And then the orthodontist desires, desirable treatment are achieved, desired goals are achieved or not. He goes ahead and he just checks whether all the treatment uh, uh, digitally, everything happened. It's 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 planned according to the plan or uh, treatment plan or not. The orthodontist uh, proofreads. Basically, he does the, the proofreading whether there is a proper uh, planning done or not. So, with the help of this software, uh, this proof system and the uh, this clean check, these people uh, the plan had the, all the treatment digitally. So, this was just a, a general small clip of the planning. So. So staging, I told you there the treatment takes 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 place in the form of stages. So there there won't be just uh, one tray or two tray or three tray wherein you wear the tray and it'll uh, it'll correct your tooth tooth movement from that this position to that position. So here we go ahead with a sequence of trays. So there will be a staging of trays. Then suppose there will be a stage one, stage two, stage three, wherein in normal orthodontic treatment as well you have something called as Stages, stage one, stage two, stage three. Wherein in stage one, you go ahead and do some alignment of those teeth. There will be crooked teeth, there will be some uh, teeth front behind crowding. So all those things will be taken care of. In second stage, they will do some mechanics. There will be something called as space closures, whether you have done some extractions to close those, close those spaces or uh, go ahead and consolidate those spaces. In the third stage, what happens is basically finishing. So that's what basically this staging is all about. Staging is basically they plan the uh, treatment in the stages. From so that the technician and uh, set up all the intermediate steps required to guide the teeth from initial to the final position. So, basic, uh, we need to understand two things in this staging. 
So two factors are most important in planning the stages of the tooth movement. First is the path of tooth movement. Suppose I have an incisor, I have a canine. These teeth are uh, in this in, in a particular position. How this the path of these teeth should be planned? Suppose there's an there's an uh, impacted canine or there's an there's an uh, highly placed canine in the upper arch. So how what will the path of this teeth canine into the how in the uh, this impacted canine on the highly placed canine coming into the arch along with the other teeth? So the path of the tooth, tooth movement is planned. And next thing is the velocity at which the tooth are moved. These are the two most important factors which will define your tooth movement. So these are most, uh, these should be planned very carefully. So basic tooth movement which takes place per tooth al clear aligner is, it is 0 0.20 to 0 0.25 mm per stage. So this is a, a minimal amount of, or the, you can say average amount of tooth movement per aligner. Yeah, so in this picture, Basically, here you can see uh, in this first image, you have some color code, color coded uh, incisors are in different colors, the canines are in different colors. So uh, this black thing, black like black, black mark teeth are uh, moving uh, into advanced uh, movement. There will be a there will be a lot of tooth movement occurring in these particular particular teeth. And the light shaded blue blue shaded blue shaded teeth are uh, having some moderate amount of teeth. So here this chart gives you an idea. So what teeth is going undergoing a what amount of tooth, tooth movement and also gives you an idea of what amount of IPR interproximal reduction has to be uh, done in what area so that and this second image here you this is just a digital uh, line diagram wherein you can see stage one stage two stage three stage four the stages and these are the tooth uh, this, this these lines represent the tooth these central lines are incisors these are the laterals, these are the canines, premolar, second premolar and the molar. So it shows you a general uh, path wherein uh, in what stage, what, what tooth is uh, what tooth is moving and how, what amount of tooth uh, at rate at which it is moving. So it's just basically for tracking for the orthodontist whether the teeth is planned accordingly or not. So that's about the software there again. Yeah, that was about your planning the treatment sequence and staging and collecting records. Now uh, we see the fabrication process. Fabrication process of the aligners is its own, it's in its own, it's a state of art. It's one of the most cutting, cutting edge things which happen. It is all CAD CAM, uh, computer aided design, computer aided manufacturing process, where you use some uh, laser and uh, uh, serial lithographic machines uh, with, to manufacture these aligners. So in this uh, simple, in this video, you can just uh, get an idea of the aligners are manufactured. So we have done the planning. Next thing is to get these uh, digital models into a live models, how they are printed. In this video, you can see there's a model and they are, here there's a, it's a lab process wherein a Biostar sheet is used. They use the heat to melt down that sheet, the poly, polyethylene or poly uh, glycol sheets. That sheet with the amount of pressure, with the help of the pressure, what happens is it adapts to that uh, model, as you can see in this. So this is the extent at which the teeth has to be trimmed. All these things will be planned digitally. And here there's a trimming and finishing of that aligner taking, which is done. So the aligner is ready, finished, finished the tooth model. So that was just lab uh, building manufacturing uh, uh, video, uh, or just general idea how the aligners are formed and what material they are used. Here you can, see, uh, you can just have a look how the robotic trimming is done. The just to have an idea how the robotic trimming is done on the machine. So you see there's an aligner. aligner. And this trimming process itself is uh, already planned, pre-planned, uh, amount of uh, tooth which are involved and the extent at which the tooth uh, aligner has to sit. So it will accordingly 
in the aligners and it's ready yeah so that was about a little bit of manufacturing uh, quickly so just having a general idea how the aligners are manufactured and how they are finished so yeah so next coming to the technical uh, aspects of clear aligners so i was telling about attachments right so these attachments basically as in this picture you can make out this is a canine or the the teeth with it has a uh, it has a spot on it so these are basically aligners are some added components or uh, on the tooth surface to enhance and perf and perform some specific tooth movements to occur so this basically these are composite uh, you use a certain uh, uh, you have uh, templates the aligner company will gives you a pre and template just like an aligner which you saw earlier the template is used uh, and the composite is used to fill in that gap to uh, the, basically it's a composite it's a composite which sticks onto the tooth surface and when the aligners is uh, aligners are worn this attachment helps the tooth to move in a particular direction or some specific direction by forming a pressure point yeah so uh, Uh, what are the different classification of aligner uh, this attachments uh, first thing is attachments which assist in some specific tooth movements suppose there is a rotation so there will there will be a some amount of uh, attachments planned into the system wherein the tooth will uh, de rotate with the help of those attachments so those are the first category second category are the attachments which are uh, used for basically retention of the appliance so where you need some additional retention so those attachments are uh, used to have the tray uh, retaining into the tooth next is to provide some auxiliary functions you can see the i'll show you the photos so yeah, here you can see in this photograph there is a this teeth so basically a chunk of composite small uh, button like thing which is bonded with the help of the templates on to the tooth surface so these these aligners these attachments have basically they have some uh, particular function and it is that's why they are these uh, attachments are given and there is some um, other factors which is aesthetic factor and comfort factor so these are the other uh, attachments are basically it's not the part of aligner but still it is included in the aligners being is still being aesthetic so that is one of the features of these attachments this is a digital model showing the attachments in this model you can see there is a uh, small uh, points of aligners and here Uh, this this composite aligners are into the place in the oral cavity yeah in this picture i'll just i'll just tell you a general idea of this attachment how this attachment works so in this picture you can see there are two attachments in this model you can make out there are one attachment here and here are one attachment which are uh, almost opposite to each other and they have opposite function so here uh, in this photograph you can see this red and blue arrow so red arrow is the root the root uh, the root of this teeth which is pre treatment before the treatment so when these aligners are these aligners are worn and all along along with these attachments what happens is there will be some build up of those pressure points what because there's a bulk some bulk composite onto that tooth it uh, along with the when the aligners is seated these uh, attachments work in a specific direction and cause the tooth to move so here you can see there's one attachment on the Uh, upper part and the one other attachment of the lower part so what happen what's happening here is this these attachments are creating the couple they are creating a little couple movement in this teeth and then there will be a movement of root here from this position to this position so basically these are computer plant attachments the 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 surface the surfaces and the amount of beveling and the amount of bulk which has to be given uh, that will be planned in the digitally and then uh, the tooth movement will be planned digitally then uh, it is depicting in uh, real life in clinically how when it is given so that is the basic function so one one of the type of uh, function which uh, attachment renders so attachments are used for so many other uh, tooth movements to assist different tooth movements so i'll just uh, uh, go uh, to have an idea how this aligners are uh, the results so this was uh, a case treated by uh, treated 
uh, in my college when I was in my PG. So this was a case done by me. This is a pre-treatment program. So basically, this is a case in the process, all four extraction cases. First, prebolas were extracted in this in this, in, in this in this patient, and then uh, the patient maybe didn't go the weight and return or what or the reason was. This one, this is how the patient came to the uh, clinic. In the graph, you can see the plasma effusion. There's a less spacing, and there's a increased overjet as well. So this is the profile in the uh, pre-treatment. The pre-treatment OPC and lateral step, the general records which has to be connect, correct, uh, collected before the uh, treatment. So this is during treatment, and uh, treatment basically it was a, it was a non-extraction treatment to basically to consolidate and close the spaces of the patient and get the teeth. Uh, Dr. Piroz, we lost you. Yeah. yeah. We lost you. For Is the screen? Uh... No, it's not. I, we cannot see you. Okay, sorry. Okay, I'm uh, not audible. Yeah, you're audible, but your screen is I'm not audible. Seen. Yeah. Just a second. How oh, is it seen? No, we cannot see your screen still. So screen sharing is on here. Yeah, I think uh, we can see your screen. It's visible. Screen is visible. Yes. Yeah, so can you please tell me where I lost the track of the presentation? Yeah, you can start here, Feroz. No, nee, Dr. Feroz. Yeah, it's fine. You go ahead. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's going smooth. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this was a pre treatment of the patient. Uh, and uh, the mid treatment, you can see there's attachments here as well, given in the molars and the premolars. Basically, these attachments were given for some of uh, the molars here. So basically, uh, the, these attachments in the easy uh, and uh, success, uh, optimized treatment. Uh, the treatment photograph of the patient, there's a, all the spaces are closed in the upper and the lower arches. This is Photograph post treatment, and these are the accent of the patient, and there's a lip comp. I think it's some technical issue. Yes, I'll just check yeah. with him and get back. Sure, sure, please. No problem. Hello? Yes, Feroz, we are here. Yeah. So, this is the first. Here you can see the drastic amount of uh, improvement in the. So, uh, some other merit of clear analysis. One open bite case. This is a pre treatment photograph of the patient. You can see there's a 3 to 4 mm of open bite. Case. Hello. 
Hello. Yes, Dr. Firuz. Yeah. We lost you again. Your screen. Yeah, yeah. No, we cannot see your screen as yet. Hello. Yeah, we cannot see your screen as yet. Okay. Uh, is it visible now? No, no, Doctor Fred is not it. If you can restart the case, you know, case presentations, I think that will be better for the flow. We'll edit yeah, it. Well. Sure, sure. So the screen is visible now, right? As of now? Yes, Dr. So this is an case. We this photograph. MM of open anterior open bite. The crowding in the upper and lower arch. The patient is having incompetent lips. This is easy in the black as well. Uh, uh, here, this photograph, you can see uh, how to clean the soft, uh, wherein there is a blue and white tooth marking. Basically, this blue uh, points are the positioning of the tooth. This where three treatment and then this is a digital uh, treatment plan or stage of the tooth, wherein Hello. Doctor. Hello. Yes, Bruce. Yes, yes. You can go ahead. So yeah. So this is an open bite case. Uh, this is an immediate result of this open bite case after the uh, final analog. So here the result you can see there's a little bit of slight open, uh, open bite in the posterior teeth, you can see there's a little bit of open bite. So again, there was a refining of alignments done and some additional alignments were given uh, for another uh, set of period. Then this is the occlusion after 14 months of the treatment. You can see the posterior, posterior uh, open bite is settled. So coming going ahead to the next case, uh, there's a lower incisor extraction case. So in this Photograph, you can see the patient has a, a class three super class one type of. There's a, a, a moderate amount of lower crowding and upper crowding uh, in both the arches. Uh, so uh, this case was treated along with the lower incisor extraction. One single lower incisor was extracted, and the uh, malocclusion was corrected. So this is again a clean check software uh, present uh, uh, presentation, wherein you can see how the uh, attachments are planned on what teeth the attachments are given and where the IPR is done. This, this small arrow graph, arrows show you the amount of interproximal stripping or interproximal reduction, which is planned for a particular teeth. So here 0.4 mm of uh, interproximal reduction was planned in this uh, mesial surface of this lateral canine for having a uh, malocclusion corrected. So this, this, this program shows you a digital plan. So then uh, after this aligner was uh, how the initial there was the initial plan after the aligners finished. This was the type of finish which was 
closer to the patient. And then you can see there's a lot of uh, lower spacing and there's a uh, there's little bit of black triangles in the lower arch and the occlusion is not completely settled uh, along with the jet, over jet. So again, there was refinement of aligners done. And then after the refinement and uh, giving additional, additional set of aligners to the patient, this is a finished uh, occlusion. The inclination of the lower incisors is corrected. The crowding is, is upper and lower, and crowding is also as well resolved. The occlusion is nicely settled. So one, one more case, we'll see uh, extraction of three molars. One case, which is a IMAX kind of a case, there you can see there's a severe incompetent lips. The patient has a uh, protrusive profile, very, very convex type of a profile. So the patient had that uh, issue which has to be resolved. That is a major concern. So 14 months, after the 14 months of treatment, this is the intraoral photographs which was uh, delivered. So you can see the extractions, first primolas uh, have been extracted in this case, and the space is closed, nicely closed. And then uh, still there's a little bit of root adjacent. Uh, uh, this is uh, this root inclinations are not uh, correctly uh, settled. So a little bit of finishing has had to be done in this case. In this OPC as well, you can see you can make out the second primolas are not uh, root not parallel to each other. So root parallelism is some goal, authority goal which has to be achieved for having a stability. So a few little bit of settling had to be done in this case. And then uh, what they did was they gave the settling elastics. So basically, they have given this uh, elastic uh, uh, along the course of the orifice. So this was the way the zigzag kind of an, uh, path of elastics to have the teeth, posterior teeth settle down. There was a posterior, uh, in, this, in this program, you can see there's a lot of uh, open bite and there's a little bit of settling which has to be done. So with the help of this elastics, it was easily closed. And this is how the trade, uh, final records look like. You can see there's a protrusive profile is corrected. Nice and pleasant straight profile. Lip competency is there. Smile is improved. And the extraction space as well is very well closed. And the tooth are very parallel to each other and settled nicely. So that was a few cases where in aligners are used to uh, have different malocclusions corrected. So next we'll move ahead and we'll just get into the little bit of uh, uh, treatment aspect. So, orthodontic treatment is aligners. Basically, initial treatment visits involves inserting the first appliance of the series and carefully checking to the to be sure the aligners are fully seated. So, first major thing which every clinician has to check is the aligners are properly seated in the oral cavity. The aligners are properly sitting to the occlusion. Only then these aligners will work accordingly, planned accordingly. So, some patients require some attachments to the teeth. As we previously discussed, some attachments are required for some specific amount of tooth uh, movements to happen, like extrusion of some teeth, some extraction space closure has to be planned. In such cases, these attachments are planned. So aligners typically are worn in pairs, upper and lower, for 24 hours a day, 24 hours a day, at least or at least 22 hours a day, which is uh, which is must uh, for the aligner to work. So the patient has advised to remove the aligners only doing eating, drinking, and brushing and flossing. Other than that, the patient should have the aligners on. So, uh, and the aligners are, suppose well, there's a set of aligners. So each aligner should be uh, worn for a, a period of 14 days. 14 days is the average amount of uh, period, which is uh, after which the aligners are, the next aligners, the patient is asked to wear next, next set of aligners. So uh, uh, we'll see the protocol for changing. What is the protocol for changing? So most of the aligner providers companies have common timeline that is 14 days, two weeks. So two weeks is a standard uh, amount of time for the aligner to change, to jump the aligner from one to two or three to four. And the patient should keep the, uh, keep the last three to four aligners in order to go back to a stage that fits if sitting problem occurs. So the patient should only always advised to have those uh, old three to four aligners with them safely so that if, whenever there's a problem occurring in the occlusion, whenever the, there's a, uh, some aligner is not fitting into the mouth, suppose a 10th aligner is not fitting into the patient's mouth. So the patient is always advised to have the previous aligners, that is the eight, ninth, those aligners, so that the patient wears those aligners and get the teeth uh, settled 
properly and then go ahead with the future aligners. Uh, and next is, if the patient does not wear an aligner more than two to three weeks, uh, then there would be a uh, complete, the treatment will be completely off. Uh, off. So then the teeth will not track according to the digital plan. So the patient should be, to have to go for a scanning. Maybe a two set of impressions has to be taken so that the treatment will go ahead. Because the, the, the tooth uh, move in some other directions and there would be some instability of the, treat, uh, the treatment. If the patient is discontinuing the treatment for at least two to three weeks. Next is the, if the patient loses an aligner. Basically, suppose the patient usually they lose, lose some aligners. There is always a chance you can lose an aligner. The patient can lose an aligner. So they should always advise to use uh, a tray which is ahead or the tray which is previous. Suppose that patient has lost uh, number seven. So the patient should be advised to use uh, number eight or number six. Uh, so that the, teeth, uh, the treatment is going further ahead. Uh, so next, we'll get to the, some uh, issues and the problems which will, uh, some common problems which we face during the treatment. First thing is, uh, we look for tracking problems. So this is one of the, one of the most uh, major uh, important uh, problem during the treatment which come across and which is most uh, commonly neglected in most of the treatments. So tracking, tracking is basically, this first image you can see the aligners are not completely snugly fitting to the tooth surface. There's a little bit of aligner, aligner uh, material which is coming out. The tray is not completely fitting to the tooth shape. So that basically is off tracking. So if the tooth are not following the aligner, it is known as, it is known as off tracking. So such, in such scenarios, it's, uh, it should be dealt with uh, uh, great care uh, because they, it could lead to a lot of other undesirable uh, issues in the treatment. So the clinician should uh, detect such uh, treatment proceedings and try to rectify those things, which I'll be talking ahead. Uh, next, one more thing, what would happen is attachments which we give are not tracking along with the aligners. So in, the, in this photograph, you can see uh, this is a uh, this is attachment which is given and it is uh, slightly uh, marked with a pencil so that you can see. And here, when the patient is wearing the aligner, uh, you can see this the aligner is uh, the attachment in the aligner is some, somewhere else and the attachments of teeth is somewhere else. So this also would lead to some undesirable tooth movements, which we don't want to happen. So possible reasons, why, why will this thing happen? Why will the uh, aligner will uh, go off track? So basically this will happen because the patient uh, may not be wearing the appliance for a sufficient amount of time. So the, at least the patient are advised to wear 22 hours per day, or at least 20 to 24 hours, 22 hours per day. If the patient is not wearing them for at least 20 hours a day, then there's no point in uh, uh, treatment at all because there, there will be this all these problems occurring uh, will, will which will start to occur so the so patient should be very well demonstrated and uh, uh, told to wear the aligners for at least 22 hours a day so that these problems won't occur and next next one more reason would be because there is a insufficient uh, space or insufficient force in the aligner system so such cases this needs to be taken care of so we'll see that. So basically this can usually be corrected by remaining, by remaining on a specific appliance for more than 20 hours a day for two weeks. So suppose uh, number seven or number eight, number eight is not, uh, aligner is not tracking with the teeth. The aligner is not fitting. So the patient is told to remain on that particular aligner or maybe a previous aligner for at least two weeks. So that the teeth, uh, uh, the tooth, tooth position which is lost, the tooth uh, tracking that will get on track. So the patient has, is basically told to stay on that particular aligner for two weeks and they can use some additional, uh, uh, this is a bite sheaves, which the patient is given to, uh, so that the patient, this is basically a polyurethane foam uh, and the patient is asked to bite in this way along with the aligners in place. Uh, and then you get that uh, the aligners will snugly fit. This photograph you can see. How the aligner is... Uh, fitting properly after the use of the sheaves. So, yeah, yeah. So what is a possible solution for off tracking? So what can be done? If the patient occlusion is, cannot be recaptured by an appliance, so of course the patient is failed. Even after wearing a specific uh, aligner for two weeks, even after that, they're not able to get the teeth in track. Then it is advised to have a rescanning of the patient and uh, having a 
new set of aligners given to the patient. Only then we can uh, have the treatment finished. Or when there is an attachment which is not tracking along with the aligners, we have to try to rebound the attachment or maybe remove a little bit of excess. There will be always a possibility. There will be some error in the attachment placement of attachments as well. So those need to be uh, seen and proof proofread. And maybe when there is a little, uh, insufficient space as well, the aligners will not fit. So the amount of IPR which is planned into the treatment has to be done. So next uh, uh, we'll see the attachments demonding. This is one more one more uh, uh, complication within treatment, which is most common uh, because the patients will be not be wearing the aligners when they are having food or something. So these composite attachments they are just placed under the tool surface. Maybe the most attachments which will break are the on which are premolar and molars because the patient when they have food and they bite, they they may eat something hard. So during that time the aligner these attachments tend to break down. So uh, that will be the most common reason for these attachments to break. One more reason would be the doctors, uh, it would not have been bonded properly. So what is the solution for us is basically to replace under better isolation using an attachment with a good uh, uh, bonding uh, materials, the composite uh, composites to have a better strength. And next problem would be aligner. Uh, basically here in this photograph, you can see the aligners are not fitting. The aligner is just halfway through and it is not coming down. So why is this occurring? Maybe because of suboptimal uh, optimal scans or uh, impressions which are not correctly recorded the uh, tooth structure. So in such cases, there will be this problem which will be faced. So solution for this is you have to take uh, re-scanning should be done and impression should be taken again for having a uh, aligner planned again. Next thing, next common problem patient uh, talk about is the aligners won't stay in teeth, it will always pop off. There will be an aligner which will be falling off when the patient is trying to speak or something like that. So what would the possible reason is, uh, there will be at the start of the treatment, the scanning won't, won't have been occurred properly, basically. Scanning or maybe the impressions would, wouldn't have met that standard wherein you have that uh, accurate amount of uh, tooth uh, recorded. So that is one of the most common uh, problems wherein the aligner won't fit and will pop out. So again, the problem solution is take a good digital scan again, or maybe a good impression, uh, which is uh, which is meeting the standards, and then the patient can ask to uh, uh, if there's and the patient also can be asked to use those bite tubes which we saw polyurethane foam, uh, wherein the aligners are uh, made to fit tightly with those bite tubes. Next thing is next problem would be aligner are uh, too retentive. Maybe uh, the patient is wearing the aligner and it is not coming out. So in such cases, basically it will happen in very severely uh, crowded or very tipped teeth, flaring teeth. So you can see in this photograph. So such in such malocclusion, there will be a problem always that the aligner are not coming out easily. And the patient is trying to take out it. So in such cases, what you do is basically you trim away the undercut area, undercut areas. You try to relieve the areas where there's a lot of uh, excessive amount of tipping or there's an excessive amount of crowding. In such areas, you try to trim a little bit and make the aligner a little free for the patient to wear it and uh, take it out. So we also try to create some smooth edges in the attachments. So those, sometimes those attachments will be too retentive. They won't leave that aligner come out. So you try to uh, maybe smoothen out those edges of those attachments. So then the problem will be solved. Next uh, common problem uh, is, uh, yeah, one more thing is, uh, aligners are not retentive at all because the, uh, you can see in this photograph, in the, there's a very short clinical crowds. So in such cases, we to have expectation that aligner will sit and have a good retention. It is very uh, difficult to have that. So what you do in such cases is basically use some detailing pliers. So how we have some uh, the orthodontic pliers? There is some called something called as detailing pliers. In this photograph, you can see this detailing plier is used to have to create a kind of an undercut or maybe a dimple for additional retention of the tooth. So these uh, detaining pliers are used uh, into the maybe in this this cervical or maybe interdental areas. In this photograph, you can see wherein these uh, small dimples or small depressions will have the aligners uh, fitting little with a little bit of extra retention. So that can be done in such cases. And one more common thing is. 
in this photograph you can see the canine premolar and the, pre, the premolars and the canine and how, are, how these teeth are positioned so with the help of uh, normal ally aligner and uh, attachments it could be very difficult for the clinician to have a good rotation or maybe do it tooth movement so in such cases we can always go ahead and use some auxiliaries which we spoke about along with the aligners in this second photograph you can make out there is and they have used uh, bo uh, they have bonded some uh, buttons some metal uh, metal uh, small buttons there and they have used elastics so with the help of those auxiliaries along with the aligners you can achieve that tooth correction so this this tooth correction can be uh, enhanced with the help of those uh, buttons and elastics and one more thing uh, reason would, would be ipr suppose there's a very heavy crowding in the teeth and we expect the teeth to move freely that won't happen so only when there is a amount of slight slicing of the tooth done interdentally only then the teeth will be free to move and rotate around so here in this photograph you can see uh, a tight contact is being relieved or maybe crowding can be relieved with the help of this ipr strips and then the teeth will be free to move around next thing is uh, teeth are not extruding uh, suppose you want some teeth to extrude some you want the teeth to come out so that won't happen sometimes basically it would be because of uh, the extrusion extrusion is very too much of extrusion which is planned to the planned into the treatment in such cases they won't uh, come out come across with the help of just aligners so you have to use some additional fixed uh, uh, attachments wherein they help in additional uh, forces and have a proper extrusion in this photograph you can see there's a this canine is little bit higher than the adjacent teeth so what they have done is they have used some elastics with help of these elastics they and the attachments they have uh, they tried to settle down and extrude this canine and you can also use dads in some severe uh, cases you can uh, the, the temporary anchorage devices or uh, screws can be used in the interdental area for uh, extrusion movements so uh, yeah now coming to the finishing finishing part This is one of the most challenging with clear aligners again. So finishing is a critical part of orthodontic treatment. Uh, so there are some several. Uh, I'll just go through a little bit of uh, several factors which are important to finish. So most common problem which occurs in uh, aligner treatment is posterior open bite, as you can see in this photograph. So what you have to just do is you have to. So you have to just uh, sorry about that. Uh, you have to just. Uh, try to trim away the aligner maybe from the premolar up till the molar suppose the molars are not settled down you have to just keep the aligner till the premolars and then use some buttons like this and uh, have the white settled in this in this manner so that is one of the most simple st simple steps which can be done for the proper uh, finishing yeah next thing is managing managing some severe rotations suppose you have not done you have done the you know, aligners you have just used all the set of aligners and still there is a uh, amount of root uh, removed root movements and rotations which has to be corrected so what you can do is you can use some amount of uh, fixed appliances here because as you can see in this photograph uh, they have used some buttons and they have used some brackets as well and tubes so that along with the wire so that these these ex ex uh, extensive tooth movements are happening so you can infuse amount of little bit of conventional fixed orthodontics along with the aligners all you can always go ahead and do that in such cases and black triangles this is one of the most common problems during finishing maybe most commonly in the lower incisor uh, extraction cases you can you will see this kind of uh, issues so what you have to do is basically uh, do a little bit of ipr in this uh, incisal aspects of this teeth and then refine the aligners and uh, maybe give the uh, give a little more of uh, extra aligners and then settle the settle the uh, space next is you have some residual spaces like this in this photograph you can see so here what you can do is you can wear the you can ask the patient to wear uh, maybe a week more so suppose a patient has worn the aligner for two weeks still there is space you can ask the patient to wear for extended period of time or you can do some over correction plan in the treatment itself when you are planning the treatment in the in the software digitally you can have some you can have some over correction plan so that the, the space will be closed and next thing is crowding some residual crowding will be left out in some uh, in this photograph you can see so basically there's a little of crowding still left 
So you can use some uh, dimple pliers or this detangling pliers. Uh, and yeah, in this photograph, you can make out this is there, there is one point here in the disto lingual aspect of this teeth and the buckle, uh, buckle label aspect. So you can you have to just create pressure points here, pressure point over here with the help of this uh, plier. You have to create some pressure points over here and over here. What happens is basically it creates a couple. One tooth is one force is acting in this direction, and the other force is acting in the opposite direction in this way. The disto. Uh, this lingual aspect is coming out and the labio buccal aspect is coming in so that there will be a correction of this crowding taking place so next aspect which is a, a important tip to take is over correction so basically clear angle treatment won't deliver it to the the expected amount of planning which you have done in the uh, digitally it won't come out as exact in the into the treat in the treatment so there there's always uh, advised to do have some over corrections to be done in some cases like rotations or deep bite cases or open bite cases and some extraction cases you should always go ahead and do some over correction of the uh, tooth movement so that will help you in retaining those teeth and retention is basically it's, uh, it's the most it's, it's a routine part of the treatment wherein you go ahead and give some fixed retainer or maybe a removal retainer like this in this photograph you can see there's a fixed retainer in the canine to canine and uh, and you can always ask the patient to wear some vacuum formed retainers just similar to the aligners you can ask the patient to wear those aligners for a year at least so coming to the last part of the seminar uh, we'll just see what are the pros and cons to uh, finish up with this topic so first thing is most advantageous thing is aesthetics so aligners are basically very uh, aesthetic and very patient friendly and they are very attracting to the patients and uh, that is the most uh, important factor wherein the patient opt, opts for this treatment next thing is, is removal it's, the patient can always remove the aligners and they can go around and they, suppose the patient wants to go outside for a meeting or maybe a party they can always take out the, uh, uh, this aligner and keep uh, in their bags so that's one of the major advantage as well as it has a other side of point that is a uh, also a bigger uh, disadvantage because it's uh, the advantages for the patient but very a lot of uh, trouble for the orthodontist because he doesn't have the control of treatment the patient is doing so and they are removing it and the orthodontist cannot control it all the time so that is one of the it's it's it has two, two sides of point next is it's comfortable the patient can always uh, take it out and it's not like uh, you have a metal in your mouth like the conventional braces and you can always have a better oral hygiene and very simple to wear and it has less amount of decalcification and white spot lesions occurring post treatment and then it also has a shorter appointments and the decreased doctor and auxiliary time so when the patient is what uh, what we do in conventional treatment is the patient has to walk in and we have to change the wire you have to just uh, work on the patient clinically in aligners you don't have to do all those things you can just give the give away the patient the aligners and the patient is conveniently go, uh, getting the treatment done in their house so next thing is and uh, there is also less damage to the teeth as well which is occurring uh, and uh, next thing is decreased occlusal abrasion so because of some uh, maybe the patient have some habits so if the patient has some habits like abrasion all those things by giving these aligners what they do is they clear the occlusal uh, uh, occlusal uh, uh, those abnormalities and there will be uh, better uh, correction of those some parafunctional habits uh, next is fewer emergencies and uh, ability to review the treatment whenever we want and the patient uh, provides a good record uh, but the patient can also always be shown suppose the before giving the starting the treatment we can have the treatment reviewed yeah just the same About that. So, coming to the last thing, limitations or the disadvantages of aligners. Basically, compliance. Compliance is one of the most important factors in this treatment. We want the patient to wear the aligners, or else the patient that the treatment treatment won't be done. So, this is one of the most uh, important drawback of this aligners, wherein the complete control is in the patient's hand. The orthodontist doesn't have the control. 
and then the patient should have those complete the teeth should, all the overall teeth should be completely erected you cannot give it in some uh, cases where there's a, a partially erected teeth or there's a, a mixed dentition in such cases it's not possible and one more thing is there's no capability to inc incorporate the basal and orthopedic changes of the system you just have the uh, teeth which are uh, seen there's no you can't see the bony changes in this treatment okay yeah, one, and one more biggest disadvantage of this treatment is cost. Cost factor is very high compared to the conventional treatment uh, as compared to the uh, regular treatment which we do. So, uh, because of uh, you have all this process step thing which is happening in this treatment protocol. The next is inability to integrate the hard and soft tissues. As I earlier told you, we can just have the changes which are occurring in the dentition. We can't see the changes with the, which are occurring in soft tissues. We cannot relate. Uh, those changes in this uh, aligner treatment and planning. And next is we cannot treat all the occlusions, like severe malocclusions cannot be treated in this such cases. And analysis will analysis can always be lost with the patient. So that is one of the most biggest disadvantages. So concluding the uh, today's presentation, uh, I'll just say clear analysis I have progressed immensely since its inception. There are currently certain limitations to this appliance in terms of cost case selection experience required for the computer planning by the dental doctor or the orthodontist need to have some experience to handle this digital platform and difficulty to obtain some certain good movements. Uh, so as technology incorporates orthodontic smartness into the clear awareness and improves protocols and tools for treatment planning, aligner therapy moves closer and closer to becoming the true state of the art treatment in orthodontic perspective. So that would be the end of my seminar. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Feroz. Uh, Mashallah, great presentation. Oh, yeah. most welcome, sir. Mashallah, can we have the uh, other members on board? Uh, Dr. Khan, can I have your audio and video on? And Dr. Asim Basha, can I have your audio and video on? Yeah? Dr. Asim Basha? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Nadi. Yeah, I can hear you. I proceed with the question and answers. Jazakallah uh, khair, Dr. Feroz. Uh, mashallah, a very clear presentation. Clear aligners. Thank you. Clear presentation. Thank you so much. I think uh, no happy, no hanky panky uh, stuff. Not beating around the bush. Very straightforward for all the general dentists to understand what exactly aligners are. Yes. Uh, without wasting much of the time, Alhamdulillah, we'll take the questions as, as soon as possible. And uh, for now, we are going to yeah. have Dr. Uh, Asim Barsha on board as a panelist. He's been a senior orthodontist practicing in Bangalore. And uh, he's done a from JSS. Uh, yeah. And he's been into practice from past. Yeah. Uh, uh, in years, uh, Dr. Barsha, right? In orthodontics? Yes, he's telling me. Uh, yeah. I, think I think Dr. Khan, uh, uh, a peer in orthodontics, been practicing from past 15 years, Dr. Khan. Yep. Yeah. Mashallah. And uh, Mashallah and has handled quite a few, a lot number of Invisalign cases. And uh, to proceed with the first question, uh, Mashallah. to proceed with the first question, uh, uh, one of the doctor asks, uh, Dr. Gauss, yeah, she's asked, what's, what's your take on extraction, retraction, retention syndrome? So this is a question she's put forward. Extraction, retraction, okay. Retention syndrome. I think I th that could be corrected as extraction, retraction, uh, uh, regret syndrome. If I'm not wrong, ESSR. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be a correction. It is not retention. It's called regret syndrome. Extraction, retraction, retention syndrome is given by Dr. Rahosia. Yeah? I would make that as a correction as extraction, retraction, reg regret syndrome. Take on this, guys. See, what I basically feel is uh, this uh, extraction, retention, regret syndrome. See, people, uh, I think uh, uh, the concept of orthodontics, I think you you esteem orthodontists would agree. Four, four extractions, start with orthodontics, push the teeth, align the teeth. That was the basic concept which was followed and still followed. With the advent of aligners, I think uh, things have been simplified. So people who have got the teeth uh, extracted, so these are the people who are regretting and these are the people who developed, you know, infinite syndromes like TMJ pain and uh, those uh, mental agonies are hard to undergo. This is what I think. No, no, that's no way documented. There's no, no, no way documented. That's, that's completely wrong what you're telling, Dr. Nati. Where is it documented? 
it is nowhere documented exactly see, see if, you, if you if you finish yeah. if you finish the treatment correctly if you can finish the treatment properly i agree but 30% of relapse is expected and we are following the patient this is completely wrong uh, concept which is there they like what dr basha said uh, nothing always remember we have always had uh, two schools of thought one school of thought was all about creating space without extraction and the other school of thought was only extraction and that is the only way of creating so we had calvin case then you had pr beck there a lot of other people we can go into the history like what dr asam is saying is how you finish the case is important now always remember there's a trio we have to see with stability with aesthetics and also most importantly how your occlusion is in the end if you have an occlusion then definitely there'll be no issues of tmj you have a good molar relationship or a canine relationship you have created established an occlusion if a case that's what is uh, uh, roth has told in case you finished an occlusion well you definitely did not require a retainer but so uh, retainer for that, yes. don't you agree for that sorry whatever said and done if it is an extraction case it is retainers for life and a person without the retainers as as you said no uh, that's what i'm saying if you have a good occlusion no, it's created it's... amongst yeah bol it sir Uh, no no see it same way for example if you are giving if you are done doing a root canal you are giving a gp throat life if you are giving a crown throat life so the, the retainer is no problem why why do you single out for retainer it's completely biased nay nee, see what do you say khan <laughs> very true and see retainers also why do we keep it always remember there is something called as a gingival fibers which takes a little time for correction of the new position of the tooth into its socket so why did the retainer concept come is it's a six months wear irrespective unless and until the patient has habit unless and until patient is periodontally compromised unless and until the patient has any other correlative problems which could be one of the causes of relapse so the retention would be more most importantly why do we always offer a fixed retainer irrespective is first with the comfort of the patient not to be wearing or not wearing coming back to blame the orthodontist saying that i did wear but still the relapse has taken place so the concepts of definitely a fixed retainer and extension of a retainer in extraction cases you extend it up to the premolar in non extraction can end to can end is good and then see many other ways then the topic completely changes off we can talk like what dr asim will tell we can talk only about retention and relapse that is a different story and in altogether. fact and in fact retention is planned before Exactly. Before the start that, of the treatment. Before the start. Uh, if you don't treatment. plan retention before, then that is not the treatment at all. Exactly. Before you see the case, the your your plan for retention is there. True. So this is completely a different topic. What Dr. Gosia is taking. No. So what, no. What she was trying to you know uh, put forth her question. What I understand is uh, the, the retraction. Uh, you know the regret syndrome where people develop. So the mm-hmm. new the doctors the doctors uh, with the new school of thought. decided that, that why do extraction in orthodontics why treat why not treat the case without extraction for no, example you see the yeah. no why you, you see the, uh, the the soft tissue part you see it you see the lips you see the nose everything and then you decide about extraction in south indians when they have got uh, huge lips small noses where you will do non extraction see it depends on the soft to. tissue paradigm exactly ah. so soft, you have you, ah. you have to go about the triage where you'll have to see the position of the teeth how they are in uh, in accordance clinically and also when you see your lateral self in the opg definitely those criteria have to be considered for a patient to be placed in extraction or to be pa- patient to be placed in non extraction there I also think, when I you think, have an extraction you don't know whether it's a first premolar or second premolar unless and until then you say it is closer to the problem area why do you do a first premolar why can't you do a second premolar many people would feel okay let's do a second premolar so first premolar would be an option where in what cases so in cases you have severe crowding which is closer to the problem area you remove the first premolar patients with a bimaxillary protrusion where there may be a good uh, if you have mild vertical growth pattern then definitely you go with the first premolar extractions for the maximum retraction of the anteriors so it is case specific so when we here we talking about aligners uh, well 
that can be a topic when definitely can be discussed as me and asam be very happy to you know sir to talk about it but that's different altogether about retention relapse i think extraction orthodontics versus non extraction orthodontics itself per se is a different topic to be discussed and i think it's going to be exactly a- it's going to be a long debate no, it should I be a it should be a paramagnetic approach it should not be a dogmatic approach it should be a practical approach hmm. but most of the people swear by it dr asim basha non extraction mechanics people swear by it that's what i said non extraction no, 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 is a see, different topic if you if you if you have a scientific way of mind you cannot swear with anything today's topic tomorrow it will change you should be ready for the change and whenever you are okay. planning in orthodontics there are many different ways to reach that goal end of the day what is your goal is very important according to retail they say there are different ways of seeing how you finish your case but so we well, can't say that you can only finish your case with extraction you can't say that you can't finish your case with extraction we'll never say that's why everybody kana you can eat like this also like that but end of the day what is your goal is important so like what dr asim said your plan of relapse everything retention everything is considered the day you plan your treatment itself so that right. is so when you, you place have the bracket results. exactly that is when you start off with everything so that's a it's a different uh, thing altogether uh, dr khat what's your take on you know uh, so, uh, usage of softwares in you know choosing cases for colitis like set well see see uh, nothing see this is one more thing see as students as a postgraduate <laughs> all of us have used different different softwares we had softwares like dolphin then uh, 3d imaging many thing which came in now when you come to a topic like aligners always remember it is company bound okay each company uses their own software all right and that software is what they kind of patent themselves and they kind of sell these products so uh, each software has a different approach with uh, you could say coming to the intricities with how they actually plan to go about with extension of the gingiva considered for retention or when they take the molar support for the anchor they have to place uh, pressure points so many many softwares have a different approach but end result how they go about coming to patency that's one of the reasons why invisalign caught in really way because it is a tried and tested product now we have an aso clear align which has come out a japanese product their concept is also totally different they say that 0.4 mm of force is put on every push of to an aligner change so imagine the amount of pressure which is placed and they finish the aligners within a span, finish the treatment within a span of 7 to 10 aligners so where do we stand where is the concept of light continuous force so always remember every software is detailed to that company specific and it has to be definitely from an orthodontist or trial and error to know whether that has worked to them or not nobody can force say that you know they say that no, this is the best uh, thing no no it is case specific and definitely it is all on how the occlusion is considered into the treatment plan uh, well answered dr khan but uh, dr basha bhai according to you i think you have done plenty of aligner cases dr khan has done plenty of aligner cases dealing with different softwares which software you felt you know it is an easy go where it, even an orthodontist or a general dentist feels it's an easy go software which which exactly software you felt is more easy go or handy handy for us to you know go ahead with case selection no if you say the thing it is uh, uh, if you see the uh, if you see the clinical point of view it's invisalign okay because invisalign is trial tested it's very easy uh, but if you there's one more you know if you take the literature okay uh, there is called something called clear connect clear correct it's called fre- it has got more flexible treatment okay is it in and india? if you see the there in yeah, india clear, yeah yeah they very much here nahi hai dr sahab aaye the they were here so what the is here but not uh, yes exactly yes hmm. we i did i did try a few cases with clear correct apparently i tried an extraction case with them and also i tried an extraction case with uh, invisalign and uh, when i saw the results apparently i was quite surprised to know that the force values yes. of clear carrot varied a lot like what dr asan said is true so the extension of the treatment went longer they tried to go on lighter plates to make it more comfortable for the patient with attachments but uh, what the invisalign did they continued with the same uh, force over a period of time which definitely made a lot of difference so i have seen clear carrot uh, cases which are done abroad and here 
but alhamdulillah i think invisalign is definitely is more easier more comfortable and uh, you can manipulate you can actually really understand the software uh, better uh, dr firoz are you on, on online can i have you online i'm on a phone dr firoz yeah, yes sir yes sir yeah if there's sorry no... for uh, not being no the video sir i'm actually i would yeah i think you're doing no problem uh, i'll take the question with the other two panelists is it okay with you yes sir yeah fine okay. definitely definitely yeah i'll think the okay. stalwart of this specialty so yes. i think they will right right thank you no but we are also learners <laughs> Hello, Hello, you're also learner. Every case you're also new. learner. Ask Dr. Nadeem. Every case is new. <laughs> Every case is new. We are yeah, also learning, Fairoz. Only thing is, this is the age of acceleration, they say. Things are moving very fast. Yes, 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 sir, yes, sir. Definitely. Definitely. Dr. Fairoz is traveling, so that's the reason the two panelists can take the question. Yeah. I'll, I'll take questions and answers. from these two panels is it yeah sure yeah. please so uh, the same question put forward uh, the question is already put forth by dr hausa who have answered dr hausa ek minute ek minute uh, i think if uh, firoz is busy so ek minute i think if firoz is busy let him carry on i think we can continue the discussion with the panel Yes, sir. I would uh, regret. Please, I will deeply apologize yeah, yeah. for that because yeah, I am actually carry on, traveling. Carry on, carry on, carry on. Oh. Oh, I would, I would apologize for not carrying along. Oh. If you okay. have a permission, I'll just uh, uh, accept it. Thank you, Doctor Feroz. Thanks thank a lot. So, thank you so much for the opportunity, sir. Very grateful to be uh, presenting around you guys, and uh, inshallah, looking forward to some better opportunities ahead also as well. to be league of uh, gdp inshallah right thank you doctor thank you so much doctor rahim doctor masha sir assalam alaikum thank you assalam alaikum doctor kam i think can you please elaborate that uh, it would be much easier for us to understand see uh, nothing what i understood with dr kausia's question was uh, this particular uh, thing what we talking about is uh, uh what do you say the fluorescent uh, induced uh, thero uh, uh, pathy now always remember what he said was right but uh, why do we do it is because when you have braces over a period of time there is a dental biofilm which is often found to be with sources of bacteria that is released with toxins peptides lipto whatever and uh, leads to gingival inflammation and caries overall your maintenance is kind of completely compromised so what they do is they have applications first otherwise you have oral hygiene uh, therapist uh, this is used mostly abroad not much in india for sure and uh, these are the ones who take care whether the patient with braces does not have any issues so they do uh, what does it do basically advantage is it creates uh, an early diagnosis of caries and they identify the biofilm is identified so that is what so when you have aligners what happens is you don't fall into that uh, category because you are removing the aligner cleaning brushing and wearing it back so biofilm doesn't get uh, uh, formed unless and until the patient's poor oral hygiene and again like what i said few of the aligners extend up to 1.52 mm of the gum region to get better uh, retention when th- those kind of conditions those kind of aligners would create little problem so generally what the question was pretty genuine but not related to patients who wear aligners so since we have used an array of aligners with different companies which is more uh, suitable which is more easy to approach uh, and you know customize those aligners and start right away unlike invisalign what might take a little longer time for them to you know send those packages or even in terms of you know monetary issues which is quite costly so True. the doctor asks a question uh, which is more you know feasible to start as an aligner in india if i have to choose a good company which that would be uh dr asim sir you mean <laughs> no problem uh, i think the confident one will be better right in, in sure in, even you have got the sasi sasi also is good which one dr uh, basha snazzy snazzy okay 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 and uh, coming coming to next question what is the determining factor for the you know single tooth extraction the lower incisor 
uh, the case shown by Dr. Uh, Feroz, where you know the liners were given where a single tooth was extracted. So See, the question is, this... what is the yeah. See, single tooth extraction, frankly, it's uh, unless and until worst to worst scenarios, periodontally compromised, lingually placed, labially placed, where you have no occlusion in the posterior or canine has any kind of good occlusion, then definitely can be planned. If you have a good occlusion in the posterior up to the premolar or even to the canine, or you have severe uh, crowding in the upper and lower arch where you plan to, or factors where the periodontal compromise, tub you do extraction of one of the incisors. Otherwise, mm -hmm. never and ever you could remove. The social six are the most important social six, which are very important for your aesthetics. Whenever an orthodontic patient comes, he wants to look nicer. Unless and until he wants to have a functional correction, then it's a different story. But aesthetic point of view, your front six teeth play a very important role. So I have never been in that favor. Unless and until it's an impacted tooth or you have teeth which are severely compromised periodontal with grade 3 mobility or it's severely aligned teeth, well-aligned teeth with a lingually placed or a labially placed, then definitely extraction is inevitable. So, Bashabi, how do aligners work in supra-erupted teeth? So those are the attachments, what you are speaking about, those attachments where you want to do intrusion and extrusion, this is what the question is asked. See, coming to supra see, supra eruption of teeth, uh, for example, if you want, that is, uh, for example, high place canine, you want to supra it, it's very difficult with aligners. It's very, very difficult, especially. Again, you have to put an attachment into it. Like, for example, controlling of lower canine, is very difficult with aligners. Aligners work very well, especially if you want the constriction of the lower arch. The, the movement of the low, uh, lower incisors, it moves very well. But if you want anything to do with the supra eruption part, aligners are very bad. Even the literature tells the same thing and we also have faced the same problem. Again, yeah. you put an attachment and get it down. See, Nadim, one more very important, you should know the force levels which are acting in an aligner. There are two types. One is called a displacement-driven force system where you can just do minor changes, even tipping can be done or you can do rotations. The other one is called a force driven system where you can bring about axial correction torque. Those are the two important things which you should realize when and where should be used. The first aligner given it not necessary is the second to the third to the fourth. The movement of the tooth in a software varies. Like even the thickness of the aligner doesn't remain the same. The thickness of the aligner varies depending on the moment of your tooth along with two important things, which is your pressure points. Very, very important location of the tooth where the rotation is or if you are. Always remember, extrusion will be the most difficult moment rather than intrusion in an aligner because your force levels are varied. So these are minor things which we should realize in selection of the cases. Definitely very, very important for us to know. Now, the number of aligners which have come to the market, like Tootsi, God forbid, Astaghfirullah, now they have a case against them that you're going to block in. <laughs> Allah Akbar. I mean, I discussed about you, the number of... They're making right. our business better. And the other uh, patients who are coming out, see, like confident, like Basha Bay said, is good. But they are very few. Like Illusion is trying to push, thanks to Karina Illusion. Kapoor. So, they are <laughs> trying to push. So, these aligners will not do much wonders because they have not done their... Uh, you know, the intricate details of movement of a tooth, the way an orthodontist would require, as much as the invis line is done. But that is the cost. The planning, uh, most of the planning is already done backstage for the aligners, where yes, uh, no doubt orthodontist has its role about, you know, where he, where he needs those attachments for the tooth movement. Okay. So, what I understand and what you spoke that time, few minutes back, you said you have tried both the aligners. One is invis line and one is uh, uh, clear correct. Clear, correct. Yeah, clear, clear and correct. correct. You did extraction cases where you tried both extraction cases with both aligners. Yes. So when you speak about extraction cases, probably I'm just moving away from the topic. When you speak about extraction cases, how do you control the forces and how exactly do you achieve the torque with your brackets or with your aligners? How different is the aligners and with the brackets? Okay. So what they do is uh, whenever you have the aligners with an extraction, they will try to see the maximum anchorage Okay, so type A, type B, type C, different anchorage. And always remember, if the aligner goes through an orthodontist, results are going to be very, very different and better. 
if you feel you just taking impression sending it to the lab and say that okay it ta hoga bhai i'm making money out of it then definitely your results will be according to what the lab fellow wants not the orthodontist so we have a chart which is placed to us which every tooth movement you can allow a degree tip degree talk every detail and then we feed it to the computer the computer gives us the feedback so the results are very unless and until the doctor says okay okay everything yes 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 alina gives us a form and says fill it uh, you have to send it and they'll send you a clean check or whatever and you fill it no 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 this is not the way it works coming to your question with extraction always remember the first initial aligners what they give you will never have excess force the force is varied and then the attachments are a little more in an extraction case comparatively to a non extraction only because they want stability of the arch when there is end mass retraction so what is the point having an you know extraction case treating that case with an aligner and having a metal attachment so how does the aligner fall in the you know in a bracket of saying it is a clear aligner or clear system where there is no metal see nothing see aligner is something which is a concept right it's like how you have pa and pa you have the bags you have the uh, straight wire technique and no, all it's a concept their concept is how do they move the teeth again i repeat it's displacement driven system and force active system so they believe in that so each individual movement of the tooth with every aligner the movement of the tooth is 0.25 to at least 0.3 mm not more than that 0.4 is what they claim so their movement of the tooth initially they plan they never start with the retraction they first try to get an occlusion in the posterior try to stabilize the occlusion with their anchor depending if in case you have a case you have for a small example i give you a case with uh, uh, end on molar relationship with a uh, slight flared anterior upper where you require a uh, mesialization of the uh, anteriors and also mild distalization of the posterior just to get an occlusion it could be established to a class 1 or a class 2 molar relationship so when you actually have a clean check you will definitely get a clearer picture how much of movement has happened in number of aligners so their attachments play a very very important role that is what you have to understand okay uh, coming uh, just the same question let uh, the other doctor tries to come in with his uh, uh, question stating that does the center of resistance of maxilla or mandible matters in aligners see always yeah, remember yeah definitely see always remember yeah. center yeah every tooth where is the center of resistance of a maxillary dentition it is basically placed exactly between the premolars all right now our force levels are moving what we are not doing orthopedic force here very important it is a tooth related force okay so orthopedic ka to you should know the central resistance of the maxilla where your force has to pass through when you doing a combi pull headgear and uh, correction of uh, uh, class 2 cases now if you have a case where you have regular normal extraction i mean normal orthodontic treatment central resistance of a tooth they follow that values along with the intrusion mechanics where they moving that is where they start to place those pressure points or these uh, attachments for the precision so definitely it plays an important role so see it is it is closest plane, to the tooth can the whole occlusal plane also with this with this kind of a plan no well no occlusion plane nahi hota nothing how will that move yes, no no definitely no, it doesn't that stabilize no occlusion plane correction is not easy symmetrical asymmetrical orthodontic doesn't do it many people have a different imagine you have an arch you have a ans pns slightly is angulate raha how can you correct it with ortho no 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 whatever the dentition is will get corrected but you can't change the plane like this you can change the axial inclination of the teeth inclination of the teeth you, you cannot change the skeletal portion it's more of dental uh... no, no impossible and then that you'll require maybe a uh, a different kind of headgear the modified hybrid headgears which are come so those kind of uh, things can be changed you can change the occlusion completely those things can be done orthopedic orthopedic point of great 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 actually this was a query of dr irfan he wants to ask this nicely oh, right. by both the dignitaries uh, dr basha question to you is uh, if you are treating the case with aligners as uh, dr khan said an extraction case how do you get, how do you you know calculate the torque with your aligners how exactly do you you know calculate is it through the software provided by the company see end of the day whatever we do with aligners it is the tipping moment you Very forget good. about the torque 
very true correct it is well, you all the studies have been done on that it is only the tipping moment torque you cannot get whatever torque we get torque we get that it depends in the end of the treatment maybe in the finishing and detailing part you correct the root position right i have done more of the uh, aligners for the very simple treatment simple treatment part mild cases extraction cases i always avoid and moreover being the uh, aligners more more uh, popular among the adult patients in these patients already lot of recession has taken place periodontal bone uh, level has changed so in these patient uh, what we see is the center of resistance always varies it is not the same so my uh, thing is when it's only the tipping aligning leveling part of the treatment which this aligners do i think we have dr zahid on board dr zahid assalam alaikum dr zahid assalam alaikum nadeem sorry my drive kar raha tha walaikum assalam walaikum assalam i've been listening to everyone mashallah Uh, Dr. Zahir is an ortho practicing orthodontist in UK. Uh, I think we oh, would like to have your views on mashallah. the ongoing discussion. Yeah, go on, Nadeem. Yeah, so the question was, you know, the extraction cases are treated with aligners, and uh, as aptly said by Dr. Basha, it is basically the tipping movement what we are achieving. So torque has uh, no significance in this. So when you Thank talk you. about only tipping movement. so let me put it very blunt when you say tipping movement we are again going back retro bex technique where you are just tipping the tooth we don't want bodily movement so what is the concept of doing the whole aligner treatment pushing the teeth in such a way and when the patient smile the whole teeth looks like a concave uh, smile well what i have seen uh, what dr basha said was exactly the point uh, most of the cases uh, the unless you really control with your attachments and you know you are very uh, short movements i mean that's what they say i mean most of them what they're saying now is to prevent the exact tipping so you have to give a very very small movements very like uh, put uh, number of aligners has to be actually doubled so for example the invisalign is giving 14 aligners you do the same yes. movements in 28 aligners so you give a very short degree of movements very slow movements and then you can but as uh, dr fan said it has to be done by orthodontist If you venture just like click 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 and you know think uh, oh yeah we so that's going to be really a disaster. So even with orthodontists, I've seen uh, they struggle with uh, like axial movements. You know with the uh, incisors or rotated incisors, they derotated but they got tipped. And doing a, like a second order uh, uh, movement in uh, with uh, aligners is a really a big uh, headache. And unless you give more number of aligners. so it can be done but it has to be very well controlled very as be meticulous and you have to know your uh, game it's not just like a point a point and shoot it's not a cookbook approach it's not a cookbook not approach a, not a cookbook but of course of course orthodontics has never been uh, it's all you know different it's a different way different highways reaching to the same destination Exactly. So, that's what I was saying. Yeah. So we don't want to hurry up, you know, reaching that to the destination. Go slow and steady. That is what uh, I think basically orthodontics is. Uh, just you know, coming back to the same discussion, uh, Doctor Rahim. Uh, see, uh, probably I'm just going a little deep. Just correct me if I'm right or wrong. You extraction mechanics again with uh, aligners. Doctor Basha concurs tipping movement, which you definitely even you agree. When you are achieving a tipping movement, then where exactly the aesthetics? is falling there see always remember when you have a patient who comes with extraction definitely is case selection i would take a case which has a bimaxillary protrusion with incompetent lips and her chief complaint it will be forwardly placed upper front teeth so full stop i like would never want to do an extraction case on a patient who doesn't have that to complicate things when she says the aligner is not one and done any wonders so when you have a patient which i've selected was only on those factors i would have seen clinically incompetent lips i would have seen a growth pattern which is never horizontal it has to average to vertical for me to go about with extraction for easy movement of a tooth if god forbid i take a case where there is horizontal growth pattern and i have to plan to go for extractions i will take years and another 10 years of <laughs> movement of the teeth but still i would never close it so it is case selective 
So whichever case I chose, was seeing Anchorage, how it they've considered with aligners. I've done quite a few cases. And Alhamdulillah, with uh, lots of uh, forwarded cases to me, I've realized with a lot of things, even I've done my trial and errors. I would not lie it. And many patients who've done other clinics who've come to me, I have noticed the mistakes and flaws. What they have done is, like what Dr. Zahir said, it's not been planned well. So you replan it. You consider the molas, also consider the seven to be with the anchor. And always remember, when you're doing a retraction, how much of profile change will only be in types of the uh, uh, anchorage you take, type A, type B, type C. So if you are only retracting the anteriors, you need to take more out the posteriors and then start to retract. How much ever you do? You have to only increase the number of aligners to get better results because you want only light continuous force. And always remember, light continuous force is when you have orthodontic point of view. But these are more of interrupted forces. So you have to be even more careful. When the patient removes the aligner, teeth are going back to normal. Again, you're wearing it. So your force levels are also varied. So your inclination, axial inclination, whatever has planned along with tip will slowly bring about the changes with changes in the profile. So, and uh, one more thing I want to add, uh, Nadeem, Dr. Nadeem, I want to add one more thing. See, when these are people, patients who come with aligners, they are mostly adult patients. One thing, one point what we notice in this aligner, uh, adult patient is the lip line. Most of the time, the lip line is very big. You know, the, the lip line is covered, actually. It's a big lip line. So, most of the aesthetic part is covered. You don't have to show that exact torque on that, what you have got. You can compromise on torque over there because already their lip line is covering that area. So this is the places where you can plan out your treatment plan. But don't you, you think don't have to... these are the cases with, cha with, with stand high chances of relapses? No, See, no relapse no, again, no, you, no, you are not understanding. No. Relapse is in what kind of conditions? Yeah? No, again, it comes back to the maintenance. In aligner patients, maintenance no, is always no, much better. Because yeah, tell me. When you spoke about extraction orthodontics, which was, you know, uh, put forward mm. more uh, with Dr. Asim here, you mm. know, uh, regarding the soft tissue management, Jahanbe, mm. which is what he was trying to explain. When you don't have your root, which is to not properly aligned in the bone, and you're just trying to tip your teeth and you're going to send the patient and thinking that, you know, it's going no, to stay. No, 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 no. You're going to correct it with orthodontics, fixed orthodontics. Aligners will not correct that. That you correct it with fix. This yeah, correct it with fix. No, no. You, there's an option for us. Correct it with fix. See, nothing. End result when you finish the case. For example, as we see, avoid an extraction aligner. Avoid. Agreed. No problem. Imagine patient coming and telling you, we've been a you know private practice. Patient comes and tells you, no, I want only aligners. I'll say, no, 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 I want to. You lose the case first. <laughs> Secondly, patient will go somewhere and spoil it array and come back to you. <laughs> So what I've been learning with over a period of time is yes, if yes, why? Final result, if you are at a point you're saying Alana is not done, definitely you have an option of fixed. You can go with the self ligating the best, the new ones which have come out, the latest ones. We can always use the SLBs, the latest of that's uh, the uh, 3MS counter with Ultra. You know, I'm talking about something which end of the day, we take the responsibility. But aligners also does his wonders till a point. But again, it's case specific. So you just don't but leave it like saying, Are bhai, chhod tu, then I'll, uh, expect. Honestly speaking, when you have to put compare the aligner system with your uh, fixed orthodontics, but what is the long-term study with aligners? Is it really proving well in the, I'm not saying in the market, is it is it proving well with the orthodontist uh, in comparison to the you know fixed orthodontics? Is it giving the same excellent results. See, nothing when you see the uh, curve, you just check when the aligners curve, especially in belts in Japan, Korea, Singapore, they don't believe in uh, bracket system. They believe only in aligners. The sales of theirs is really high compared to the one in India. India is not doing well. US is, is slowly picking issue? up. The question is, is it the monetary issue now? Yes, comes once to that. Secondly, it's become uh, a thing saying that, yes, aligners, I want to remove it and I want to wear it back and I want my teeth to move. So it again, we don't know what kind of patient comes forward. It is just that it's an armor along with us saying that we do aligners too. But we are orthodontists. I believe in fixed braces. I believe in 
movement of the teeth with my hands where i'll have to do bend in the wire i will believe what torque is i believe what bends are i'll do intrusion through intrusion i will do anything i want i will rotate it according to what i want if i want positive or negative root torque so i would believe in braces but i will definitely not say to a patient who comes for aligners that i don't know that is where we should understand an orthodontist there is always a limitation that is what is to be understood by everybody that is most important with patients aligners is always an option b never exactly. an option yes option right 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 and uh, dr asan the question to you is now regarding those attachments on the tooth for the aligners and now yeah one of the attachment comes out how easy to put is to put that attachment back like unlike a bracket gets dislodged and you try to you know bond the bracket bracket right away which takes only 5 10 minutes is it the same time taken with the aligners or you know it's a big uh, you know ordeal to deal with it okay. uh no actually you have to send it back no it's not That's so it's not be so easily you have to send the back there's something Nain. like lag time they don't so what uh, nadim uh, nadim is saying is uh, a big attachment has come out uh-huh. so what they give you in a box is the first before they give you the first aligner they give uh-huh. you the initial attachment placement aligner Yes, yes. So that at my attachment placement aligner is the first aligner which will be more thinner in plate, mm-hmm. which is more flexible. So when you place it, it's easy to remove. So what I've been doing is, yeah, many patients come back with broken. I mean, they would have a big party, haddi chabe, whatever. They break the other things and come. So what I do is I just put it back to where the aligner fits in. The first one, the attachment, place back, etch it, primer, cure it with uh, the composite. global composite i use 3m and then i send it back it takes maybe 2 minutes unless and until the aligners are lost then you can't do anything then it's again you'll have to come tell the company people redo and if in case they want to scan they scan and all those things otherwise placements of attachment takes a minute yeah nothing more alhamdulillah it's like a bracket issue replacement of a bracket that's all how much of unwanted tooth movement can you expect on aligners versus the normal uh... fixed appliances yeah see this is what unwanted, is <laughs> unwanted to both rata way <laughs> you just what? see what happens again it's a software which builds on 40 50 aligners over period of the malocclusion correction so there is definitely some unwanted movement but not like an orthodont is doing and then saying are unwanted movement hoga bhai when you have a patient who comes with initial crowding i will try to push a 1622 and i'll try to activate definitely there'll be unwanted movement or might as well do a o and 4 if it is an llb i'll do o and 3 slb so if it is a normal uh, mbt i will do o and 4 align the teeth of this crowding i will never go to o and 6 why because i want to get the wire going into the bracket slot and i'll activate in such a way that i get the maximum movement so unwanted definitely uh, if you go to the deeper frankly to my little knowledge i have no idea about the invis line unwanted movement frankly i would not come okay uh, for example now uh, if i'm just comparing to aligners to you know your bracket system so imagine you have put a wire for day 1 and the next moment next month the patient shows up and you realize you know some moment has taken the unwanted movement has taken place and you want to get down to the lesser gauge wire how do you deal that in case of aligners i extend the wear of the aligner for another 2 weeks okay 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 simple Dr. Basha, we have you seen those unwanted movements in your aligners? No, no, my uh, I've not seen that. And regarding those pliers, what uh, Dr. Feroz was speaking about those, uh, 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 I don't know, what was the name of the pliers? I forgot. Uh, is is there a specific name for that? See, these are crab pliers. Basically, what you do is uh, they create buttons. It's like you know, वो तुम्हें stapler ये करती नहीं वो Uh, how do i say if i have something or show you it is yeah, quite easy it's like to create a, a kind of a tip pie karti it's like a small uh, button and then just place it on it that elastic part comes out and those are this just place in around the few which have some kind of a cut around for to place elastics and many other things there are some modifications which are done over period of time that's what nothing else how is the periodontal status compared versus to aligners to your bracket yeah your periodontal status in whole treatment from start one to the scratch to the end finish 
talk about the periodontal status, the you know the inflammation part and everything. Do you encounter more in aligners or is no, it- no, no. Few uh, aligners like the Flash, which I'm doing pretty well with in India. What they've done is they have actually extended it very minimal to the gingival. But there are few companies like the ASO Clean Aligners, which have started from Japan. They've not started cases here as much as done abroad. They have an extension up to 1.5 mm touching all over the gums. Those kind of aligners definitely have had patients complaining about swelling in the gum region. So periodontal point of view, we can't say as much as gingival would be shown by an orthodontist till we see the final results. How many years of follow-up uh, cases you have, uh, Dr. Rahim, in your clinic? Uh, Mashallah, yeah, I've been uh, I've been doing uh, the grand uh, started with the daughter to the mother to the grandmother also. Mashallah. Mm-hmm. So I have had n number, but uh, five years I've definitely kept in touch. But only mistake is I've not kept a photograph which is recorded. I just keep in touch just for the regular routine checkups. Mashallah, I've had quite a few cases. What, what is your record, uh, Dr. Asim Basha, in your clinic? How's the follow-up uh, with your aligners? Did you feel that aligners have given you better results uh, compared to your, you know, your your bracket system? I'm talking about, you no, know, no. A, similar case, a similar case, what you have done on both. No, no my, 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 uh, I go with, still with the traditional way of uh, fixed orthodontics. But you, aligners, but you, aligners, yeah. only I do in uh, relapse cases, mild opening of spaces, you know, mild, mild crowdings. But what... That, uh, Probably, I don't know. Uh, what if the patient, if I am a very, you know, creepy patient and I come to you and I say, Doc, I need aligners for, you know, this and I I won't believe in any other system. So, would you send me back or would you treat me? No, no. See, it depends. First, I see you. I see, I evaluate. If it is yes, my evaluation says yes, I take you. If I says no, I will not, I'll not, I'll not take you. So, I think Dr. Rahim is there. I think uh, he's going to talk to Dr. Rahim. <laughs> I'll I'll wait for Dr. Asim to say uh, patient base room again. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I think yeah, that's be better. I think uh, no more questions on the chat. Uh, this is what I have seen. This is the last question. Last question is by Dr. Irfan. I think you have answered Dr. Irfan's question. Fine. Uh, uh, any more doubts, queries by any of the participants uh, can be taken on to the GDP and. Uh, uh, our two uh, esteemed panelists would love to answer your, you know, queries and questions. And please feel free to even discuss your clinical cases with them on the group. Whether if you want to start with Invisalign or any kind of, you know, aligners, uh, these two uh, experienced doctors would definitely guide you from the scratch uh, till the end finish. I would definitely hear as a yes from both of you. Yes, yes inshallah. Definitely. We always definitely. definitely for GDP people. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. Anyways, uh, just concluding this uh, today's webinar. Uh, thanks a lot, to Dr. Asim Basha. Thanks a lot, to Dr. Rahim Khan, uh, for being with us and you know answering all the questions. Very, very making it very simple actually. You know, uh, and uh, simplifying to your best of your abilities. And inshallah, I hope to hear soon from Dr. Rahim Khan for a you know a, 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 a beautiful webinar on you know his topic of choice interest. Uh, so inshallah, I- inshallah. Yeah, I would take it as yes. Inshallah would be definitely yes. Thumbs up. Thumbs up to Lena Sachabu. Yeah, my bad. Anyways, Jazakallah uh, uh, Khair. Thanks a lot uh, for the all the participants uh, for bearing with us. Uh, hope to see you soon in the coming webinars. Jazakallah Khair. Inshallah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, GDP. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. GDP. Nair. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Everybody. Thank you, Dr. Thanks Nair. Thanks a lot, Nadim. Thank you, Dr. Nadim. Jazakallah. Dr. Hosia. Thank you very Dr. much. Dr. Thanks Fairos, a lot. Dr. Fairos, excellent presentation, mashallah. Nay, mashallah, he did it very smooth. It was nice, mashallah. Yes. Very informative. Yes. He did it smooth with no confusion, you know. Mashallah, okay. nice. Feels okay. good to see them do it. Yeah, dynamic fellow, very dynamic fellow. Right. Allah. 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 Allah.